Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at the process for setting up our render using Arnold and Maya. So in the flower sack scene that I have here, it's very, very simple. I just have my, my flower sack posed, uh, i got a few items on my pantry shelf, and just to make things a little bit easier to see what's going on, I've just animated the camera. There's no other animation in here, but this will give me enough, uh, you know, enough information to show you some of the things that you need to be aware of when you are rendering, especially with Arnold. Um, I have one light in this scene, uh, which is this area light. Now it's just above here. Uh, i show you if I pop out of here real quick. All right, it's just sitting up top here. And I'm going to come in and take a look at that in a moment. Um, and I also have a light that is just sort of like a sky dome light, which if I go into the render settings, pull that across here, I've set that up under the Arnold Render tab where it says Environment. Um, if you click on this little uh, checker box, you can say create sky shader, and it's just going to pop uh, this sort of dome light that sits all around your image, uh, and it just provides a little bit of ambient light. Now I've gone in and I've uh, made sure that that is actually at quite a low intensity, like 0.2, and I made it slightly blue. Now that's just my preference. Um, nothing that you have to do. In fact, you could probably get away with just using the area light or whatever other lighting you're using for your scene. Um, but I like to be able to have a little bit of extra control in terms of uh, ambience. Now, um, first thing you need to check, of course, if you don't see Arnold in your list of renderers here, is to make sure that you have it either one installed or two enabled. Um, if you don't have it installed, you'll have to uh, perhaps reinstall either Maya entirely, or you might be able to find the Arnold render installation separately online. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, in most installations, it should have just been installed by default. But if you don't see it there, uh, you need to go to Windows, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager. And uh, as soon as the Plugin Manager pops up here, we scroll down until we see the option for, uh, sometimes down here toward the bottom. Doo -doo -doo. See if it's all the way at the bottom. Not quite. Um, M2A, there we are. That's the Maya to Arnold, and you just need to make sure that that's loaded. Uh, if you click Auto Load, it will always load up. It just means that Maya might load a little bit slower. All right. Um, so as soon as you turn that on and you come back over here, you can find the Arnold renderer options. So just to talk about my scene real quick, because there are some things that you should know about, uh, and that specifically has to do with um, you know how long is it going to take for your render to render out. And if we look at our, at our scene right now, um, since I have just one light, and if I look at my basic settings, um, my camera uh, anti-aliasing is set to 3, the diffuse is set to 2, and all these other ones are set to 2. Let's just take a look at how long it takes to render uh, just a basic image using this setup. Now, what I'm going to do is um, I have my, my setup down here. Now, what I'm going to be rendering out as is a HD 720, which is 1280 by 720. That's 720p. Uh, that's my final render size. Now, you could, um, if you wanted to, maybe cut that in half while you're doing your test renders just to make it go faster. But for the purposes of the tutorial here, where I really want to show the info, uh, I'm going to keep it at this same size. So let me go ahead and uh, really quickly render this out. And I'm uh, making sure that I'm rendering from the perspective cam. That's my renderable camera here. Actually, I have this currently on shot cam. Let me put it back to the... I did it backwards. <laughs> my shot cam became my perspective, and my perspective became my shot cam, sadly. Uh, but this is really the, the view I want to be rendering from. And uh, if you click Render here and it starts to render out a view that is not what you expect it to, then you can always go to Render render and then choose specifically the camera you want to render from and that will force it to render from the right view. All right, so pressing render there. And uh, I'm just going to pause the video while this uh, happens because it'll save some time. Okay, so uh, that has now completed and it took about a minute 30 to render out. Now this is certainly not the fastest computer. Um, and so, you know, obviously the, the speed at which you can uh, render from is going to be highly dependent on the quality of your computer especially in terms of its processing power and its ability to um, hold stuff in RAM. But if we look at this using just these settings here, 
uh, we can see that we get a lot of grain, right? And that's going to be what we call a very chattery or noisy uh, result. We don't really want that much grain. But um, as we start to increase some of the sampling, we're going to find that the um, it takes a lot longer to render, obviously. So um, right now our basic sampling is at 3, 2, 2, 2, 2. And each one of these actually adds a little bit of extra time to our, um, to our uh, renders. And um, for most things, you can probably get away without having any SSS. That's more advanced and volume indirect. Um, some of you might need to have refraction on, depending on if you have any refractive materials, uh, things like glass, for example. Um, glossy is sort of like dealing with the highlights. Diffuse is important because pretty much everything is diffuse, and the overall anti-aliasing has a big effect. But one of the things that has an effect as well is the number of samples that we have coming in from the light source. So if we come in and, and take a look at our um, at our light here, I just click on the light over here. It's a Arnold area light, and if I scroll down here. Um, you'll notice that my samples are set to 1 currently. Well, let's just go ahead and boost this up to 2. And instead of taking the time to re-render the whole thing, let's just take a look at rendering a small region and uh, kind of getting an idea what the overall result looks like from that. So first off, I'm going to save this image by clicking on this button here where it says Keep Image. And now I'm just going to click and drag over an area where I can definitely see the shadows. Like there's some shadows there, and there's obviously some grain on the wall there. I've changed my samples to this light to 2. And uh, let's now re-render just this region, which is what this button does here. It'll render just inside this little rectangle that I've drawn out. I press that, and let's see what we get. Obviously, this is not going to take as much time as it would to render the whole thing. And if I slide back and forth now here, I can compare before and after. And that's already helping out quite a bit. Right, so I'm really getting rid of my grain there. Now, I don't know how long that's going to take on the overall image, but um, it's a good start. So let's just save that as well. Now I always like to increment um, whenever I'm like moving my way up through values by twos. So if I one times two is two, two times two is four. So let's just try that and just see how much better we get with four samples. I save that image, and let's just re-render that region again. Okay, um, so let's just compare that now. Now there's not a huge uh, change there, a little bit, very minor. And um, the render time is about the same though. So, okay, let's just keep it at Four for now. If it starts to take too long, we might pull it back down to two. Um, and uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to re-render the whole image using that sampling. And I'm just going to pause the video while I do that. And there we go. Okay, so this is our result now. And uh, if we compare before and after, right, uh, this was at uh, one minute 30 seconds that was with only one sample and afterwards we're getting some better results in fact actually if I save this one and I get rid of let's see get rid of this one pop that one out and then get rid of this one there we now we can compare it just the two finished renders side by side now obviously there's some pretty big differences going on in the shadows here and that's probably important um, I'm going to show you a trick here uh, in the next video about how to get rid of some of this grain in After Effects so that you don't actually have to keep pushing um, Maya to, or pushing Arnold so high that it takes too long to render things out. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, just take a look at what does it look like when we try to increase some of the render settings over here. Now, one of the biggest things that you can increase that will have a pretty dramatic effect on render time is the camera anti-aliasing. Um, but then also another really important one is diffuse. So I'm going to use the same trick again. First off, let's start with the camera anti-aliasing and set that to just one sample higher. And um, 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm kind of interested in this general area here for the most part. Also you can see that I'm getting some grain up in, in these guys as well, but this general area here is probably going to tell me the most important information because it goes from a dark area to a slightly lighter area and there's already a lot of grain going on there. So I've saved my current image. Just make sure that I do that again. And I'm going to re render that region and see what we get. Now this is going to take a little bit longer because as soon as I increase that um, anti-aliasing, my, my max samples goes quite a bit higher. But that's uh, actually not too bad. Okay, now let's just compare before and after. It was a pretty big difference there in terms of grain. Actually, hold on. Should be. <laughs> there we go. Um, all right. Still grain there, but, you know, it's not too bad. Now that took 17 seconds to render that region. Let's save that. And I'm going to, to compare now. Put that back down to 3 where it was to begin with. Let's put the diffuse up to 3 and see what we get. So we're just ch checking to see what happens when we play around with just diffuse. It's also a way to figure out, you know, which gives you the better results and does one take longer than the other as well. Okay, so there's not too much difference there in terms of the overall quality. Uh, the diffuse one seems to have been uh, just a little bit shorter in time. All right, in fact, that actually looks pretty good. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is just re-render the whole thing using these settings here. And I'll pause the video again. Okay, so that's finished now, and it took uh, about 2 minutes and 33 seconds. Uh, so we are, of course, adding to our render time each time. Um, and this is going to be your trade-off, right, is to figure out what's, what's the benefit. Uh, we we are getting a bit better results here, obviously, especially in the grain areas here. Um, and so the previous one was 202, and this one's now 233. And you have to kind of balance it based on um, the amount of frames that you have. So if you have a 15 second animation, you get 24 frames per second times 15. It's going to be 360 frames. If you have two and a half minutes, more or less, per frame, times two and a half, it's 900, uh, well, actually, that's 900 minutes, right? Um, what is 900 minutes divided by 60 minutes per hour is 15 hours, all right? So you end up with a 15-hour render, basically. Um, that's not terrible. Uh, two and a half minutes per frame is certainly within a, a reasonable amount of time to spend on a render. Uh, if I keep increasing this, however, if I try to get rid of the grain even more by upping my camera anti-aliasing, um, I'm going to be making these renders vastly longer, and of course all that's going to be adding to the amount of time it takes to finish it. So you have to be kind of realistic. This is why I do this test beforehand to say, all right, how long is it realistically going to take to render it out? Do the math, figure out how much time you have left, um, and so uh, basically, I've rendered out a couple different versions of this same scene, one which was at a little bit lower setting and one that was at a higher setting in terms of quality. And I just want to show you in the next video um, how I'm able to reduce the, the noise in those various files uh, with a cool plugin that we have available called Neat Video. Um, now, the uh, thing that I want to just finish off this video with is to show you how do you actually just render this whole thing out now? What are the right settings to use? Well, if I come over here and come back to my render settings, I'm going to go to my uh, common tab, and the first thing at the top is I just need to give this a name. So I might call this, let's say that there's a series of shots that you're rendering out. So I might call this uh, Pantry Scene 01 uh, or Shot 01. Right. If you had multiple scenes, I might break it down into scenes, but this might just be several different shots. Shot 01, all right? The image format that we want to use is EXR, uh, and this will automatically come out as a 32-bit format, uh, which is important for our color correction later on. I don't want there to be any compression, so I'll turn that to none. And I want there to be, under the frame slash animation extension, I need this to be name underscore number, dot extension. So it'll be pantry shot 01 
underscore our numbering dot exr. And now the frame padding here, depending on how many frames you have, um, you may need to make that larger or smaller just to fit all the frames. So I'm just going to use a frame padding of three here. And uh, then down here, frame range. All right, so it's got to go from frame one to frame 24, because I have 24 frames in this particular animation. In this case here, you would choose, if you have multiple shots, what is the right frame range for each of those shots? Um, I'm going to be rendering, in this case, from my perspective cam, and uh, the correct frame size, 1280 by 720. And that's pretty much it. So long as you have the right settings here that you're using for your scene, that should be great. So when we go to render this now, we're going to come to the rendering menu set. And normally we would go to render batch render. But if you do this with Arnold, you'll actually get watermarks across your renders. Uh, the trick for not getting the watermarks, for some reason, it's actually super simple, I don't know why it, it exists, but it does, is to use render sequence instead. And this will go through and it will render all of your frames through uh, the render view, and it will output them to a location. Now that's going to be based on whatever your path is up here. And uh, so right now this is going to my default folder. Um, you can change that, of course, by changing where your project is set to. So if you want that to be set somewhere else, make sure you set your project accordingly. Um, okay, so with that, um, I'm not going to start the render here because I've already rendered it out, but that's what you would need to do. And in the next video, we'll take a look at the results in After Effects.